Thank you, Roberta. Uh, again, thank you so much to everybody to be available for the fourth uh, session of the Acute Flux in My Life this, uh, Symposium, uh, what we have learned in order to be prepared. Uh, this is the fourth of five sessions dedicated for education, training, and preparedness for acute flux in my life this and i hope that at the end of this symposium uh, everybody who has been participating is more aware about the importance of uh, taking a good care of patients with acute flux in my life this and not only the patients but also the families and all the uh, people around patients with acute flux in my life this and I appreciate the time and effort of all of the participants uh, in these uh, uh, lectures. Uh, the symposium is organized by uh, a lot of people, but I like to emphasize that uh, Dr. Sadowski at the Kennedy Krieger Institute has been uh, critical uh, in the organization and logistic of the symposium. And I'd like to acknowledge also the participation of not only the John Hopkins Myelitis Myelopathy Center, but also the International Center for Spinal Cord Injury, and the team at the Kennedy Krieger, who has been critical for all of the uh, work and preparedness for, uh, particularly for rehabilitation activities around uh, acute flux and myelitis. Uh, it's very important to uh, uh, emphasize as well that the Acute Flux in My Life is Working Group that is comprised by many colleagues around the country and uh, Canada are, are very key for uh, all of the educational activities that we have around Acute Flux in My Life. And I actually, I like to acknowledge our colleagues about uh, at the uh, Children's National Center in DC uh, uh, who have been participating in the organization of the symposium. And very importantly, the contribution from uh, uh, the uh, uh, and support by the Bar McLean Fund for Neuroimmunology Research. Uh, with without that support, it, it was going to be very difficult to keep moving in many of the research activities that we have for my life, this Guillain Barre and other neuroimmunological disorders. And we appreciate greatly the involvement and support. And importantly as well, the uh, Siegel Renner Immune Association and all of the logistic uh, and all of the activities around AFM has been uh, very well supported by the Siegel Renner Immune Association. And I encourage you to visit the website of the uh, SRNA that contains a lot of information about uh, uh, acute flux and myelitis, and it's very helpful for understanding uh, uh, what is going on in not only in acute flux in my life, but also in uh, other neuroimmunological disorders. Uh, I like to emphasize, Roberta, uh, this is uh, uh, Roberta uh, during our first uh, symposium and last uh, uh, virtual symposium, she was very worried about how things were going and the technical difficulties. So Roberta and Andrea have been critical for helping us with the logistic of this symposium and we really appreciate their effort. Uh, again, the Acute Flux in My Life group has representation in many areas of the country, uh, not only for clinical activities, but also uh, for rehabilitation efforts and for basic science research. So uh, I will encourage you to get in contact with uh, members of the Acute Flux in My Life in different areas of the country. Uh, it's a very important activity for all of us to generate consensus and be prepared for all of these activities around AFM. Today is our fourth symposium. It's going to be focused on management uh, 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 of long-term consequence. It's uh, dedicated to uh, rehabilitation and long-term management. I like to emphasize that uh, the last and fifth virtual um, uh, session is going to happen on July 10 uh, at the same time on a Friday, but it will be dedicated to uh, a very important aspects of um, uh, uh, long-term management like orthopedic and surgical treatment. So I invited you to register for the fifth virtual symposium uh, that is going to be very informative uh, with the participation of different surgical and orthopedic groups around the country 
from uh, Boston Children's Center, from uh, University of California, San Francisco, Ohio, uh, uh, John Hopkins and Trinity Hospitals in, in, uh, uh, in uh, Philadelphia, and members of the Acute Flux and Myelitis Association. So I encourage you to participate in that uh, last and fifth virtual symposium. Today, we are going to be focused on uh, long-term management. I like to emphasize that the panel discussion and questions uh, sessions are going to be in a different side of the platform in the in the sessions uh, plat uh, area. So when we finish with the lecture by Dr. Sadowski and, and Jane, uh, we should move to the sessions. And similarly, at the last uh, uh, lecture by Dr. Harder, we should move to the sessions area of the Hopkins app that was explained already by uh, uh, Roberta. So, uh, Dr. Sadowski, I pass the microphone to you. Thank you, and uh, hello. It's good to see all of you again. Uh, well, actually, to be with you because I can't really see you, but I imagine your uh, faces that are thirsty for uh, learning some more about uh, acute flaccid myelitis. Today is a very clinically oriented and informative session. It starts with a wonderful uh, in-person uh, story by Sarah Todd Hammer, who is uh, one of the individuals that has been afflicted with acute flaccid myelitis. And despite of it, or because of it, ended up being a three-time published author, a dancer, a speaker, a model, and an activist. So I am pretty sure that this is going to uh, enlarge our, our uh, uh, vision, it's going to melt our hearts and it's going to start the session on a, a very good uh, note. That uh, Olesek, Joyce Olesek from Children's Hospital in Colorado is going to take us through symptom management. Then there will be a, um, a session on, maybe we can go one more. Yeah, that, so Dr. Olesek, who was an associate professor at uh, Children's um, in Colorado will take us through the symptom management and IFM. Next one. Dr. Michelle Malacosta and Kofi Annon from uh, Kennedy Krieger and Johns Hopkins will take us through respiratory management in children, not in the acute stage because we've heard about that in session two, but we are moving through the subacute management and then long term. So uh, they are uh, going to speak on to details of uh, uh, respiratory management uh, and uh, winning off the ventilator utilizing uh, innovative techniques. Next one, next slide. Courtney Portner, who is uh, one of our uh, uh, incredible therapists at Kennedy Krieger Institute, is going to take us through the activity-based program that uh, is uh, has been shown to improve day-to-day uh, -day function in uh, children with uh, acute flaccid myelitis. And she's going to set up the stage for a program that actually is continued lifelong or as long as uh, the uh, neurologic deficit persists and requires management. Next slide. Uh, Dr. Mahim Jain, who's the director of the uh, Osteogenesis Imperfecta Clinic at Kennedy Krieger Institute and assistant professor uh, of endocrinology at uh, Johns Hopkins and myself are going to take you through a couple of uh, uh, points of importance when it comes to long term management of bone health and bone loss. And then we'll have a panel discussion. Uh, again, a reminder the panel discussion is off the stage in the session tab, which you see on the left side. After that, next slide, we will have doctors Alexandra Hess and Sarah Kidd. They're both from the CDC and they will take us through uh, basically why we're doing this uh, from a governmental and a, a, a point of view, from, from the 20,000 feet uh, point of view. 
um, this day CDC is very much in uh, in the public uh, uh, focus and uh, they are the best to speak about how hard the work is to coordinate and manage uh, infectious diseases in um, in today's uh, environment. Next one, Janet Dean, who is our, um, our, when I say ours, I mean, she's mine for sure, but it is Kennedy Kriegers and uh, Johns Hopkins, a uh, pediatric nurse practitioner. Um, she knows, has intimate knowledge of every single child that has been seen and treated at, uh, at, Johns, uh, at, at Kennedy Krieger. Uh, and most of the children that have been seen at uh, um, Hopkins with the children with acute flaccid myelitis. She has been seeing children with uh, acute flaccid my myelitis related paralysis since for the last 10, 12 years. And she will give us a perspective on long term habilitation and rehabilitation services. Next one. Um, children with uh, paralysis related to acute flaccid myelitis or any other type of neurologic deficit will require advocacy uh, throughout the length of their uh, deficit. And uh, there is nobody better than uh, uh, Gigi DeFibris and Rebecca Whitney from the SRNA, the Siegel Rare Neuroimmunologic Association the, uh, um, that is sponsoring this um, the seminar to uh, take us through all those efforts. Uh, two more sessions, coping and adjustment from, um, uh, from Maggie Tuney and advocating for children in the school system uh, from Lana Harder. Maggie is from Kennedy Krieger and Dr. Harder uh, is from UT Southwesterns. They will uh, end up the second part of uh, today's mini symposium that would be followed by another uh, panel discussion in the same session tab on the left side. So without further ado, we're going to have Sarah Todd Hammer, who is going to start this session on a wonderful positive note.